25 year anniversary being back at Grace Baptist Church. And so we're going to have Brother Alan Saunders will be coming in and being our guest preacher. And we're going to have some special music. And then, of course, uh, afterward, we're going to have uh, some good fellowship uh, around the table. Uh, and if, if y'all hear the babies in the background, don't let it bother you. Amen. That's just a good indication of young families in the church and uh, uh, new blood, new way to the church. as it were. All right. Just uh, uh, I want to give you a praise. Uh, for those of you that weren't here this morning, uh, Brother Billy got the results of his last test last week uh, dealing with the cancer. And the doctors were like, you don't have cancer. And so he is cancer free. So yeah, we praise the Lord for that. Uh, so that is uh, reasons to shout. Great way to start a new year. Amen, brother? Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, and then uh, also be praying for Brother Billy and family. His uh, sister, uh, his, his last sibling, passed away. Uh, so be praying for them. And then uh, before we receive the offering, uh, Brother Jim, if you wouldn't mind uh, being our usher, just a reminder, a challenge that I gave this morning, and I'm going to repeat it tonight for those that weren't here. If you have never read your Bible all the way through, uh, I challenge you to do that this year. Not just to get it done eventually, but to set a goal and get your Bible read. From Genesis 1-1 all the way through Revelation. Uh, it can be done. And if uh, if I see you between now and the start of the new year, if you'd like, I can get you a, a, a schedule to follow. Or you can go online and simply Google, read my Bible through, or read my Bible in a year. And there are a variety that come up. Some of them will have you just starting in Genesis and going all the way through. Others have you reading starting in the Old Testament in the morning, New Testament in the evening to break it up a little bit. Uh, but let me encourage you to do that because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And that's how you will increase your faith. All right, Brother Jim, if you'll pray for the offering uh, for us tonight, sir. Holy Lord, Lord God, Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have to be in your house again this evening. And Lord, we put our faith in you for everything, Lord, to look to you for guidance and protection. And, and uh, we ask that you now bless us and bless this offering that it could be used to further the cause to get the word out to those that may not have encounter, have a reason to have any encounter with you until they are in trouble. But when we do pray and ask for a safe week, yes, bless this offering now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
go to Matthew and I don't know. this one um, what this one is uh, but last week we were looking at uh, well two weeks ago we were looking at the uh, one thief that was on the cross and then last week we were looking at Jesus on the cross um, and so and we kind of looked at uh, Jesus yeah, Jesus, the before on the cross, but before he was on the cross, and kind of during uh, the cross, uh, and so uh, we're gonna look at, and there I looked at them all. They're all short readings, so it's not like uh, it's not like it's a lot of reading. But we're actually gonna look at all what all four uh, of the gospels have to say um, with. Uh, kind of after Jesus is on the cross. And so, again, we're going to look at the case of the dead Messiah. I don't know if I said that last week, but that's what that's called. Um, and so we're going to look at Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. Well, I take that back. I take that back. <laughs> That's a little. That's a little too far. Uh, Matthew twenty-seven. Um, and and we're gonna look at verse fifteen. Matthew twenty-seven and verse fifteen. The Bible says, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain, and the top from top to the bottom. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the grave after his resurrection, and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. And when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. And many women were there beholding afar off, which followed Jesus of Galilee, ministering unto him, among which was Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the Mary of, Ze Mary of Zebedee's children. And we're going to stop there. And uh, let's go ahead and jump to, to um, chapter 28. And like I said, it's going to be short readings, but we're going to look at, um, look at the other Gospels as well. But starting in verse 1. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward toward the first day of the week came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And no fear of him, the keepers did shake, or excuse me, and for fear of him, the keepers did shake and become as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that thou that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly, and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall there ye shall uh, excuse me, there shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his word, his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by his feet and worshipped him. And then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and they shall see me. 
Now let's go ahead and jump to Mark. Mark chapter 16. Mark 16, starting in verse 1. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome and had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the sepulcher at, a, at the rising of the sun and said unto among themselves, Who shall roll away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was, a, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment. And they were frightened. And he said unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him, but go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you in, into Galilee. There shall ye see him, as he said unto you. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulchre, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Now let's go to Luke. Luke chapter 24. Luke 24, and starting also again in verse 1. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices, which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garment. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men. And be crucified, and the third day arise again. And they remembered his words, and returned from the sepulchre, and told all these things unto the eleven, and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, and Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, and the other women that were there with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulchre, and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. And then lastly, <clears throat> excuse me, if we can go to John chapter 20. John chapter 20. And starting in verse 1, the Bible says, And the first day of the week cometh Mary Madeline early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and seeing the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter, and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, and that other disciple, and came to the sepulcher. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulcher. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulcher, and seeing the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. 
For as yet they knew not the sepulchre, and he must that he must, must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again into unto their own home. So here it is again. Uh, last week we were looking at how uh, hope was just gone. Because again, uh, this man, these people trust everything in him. I mean, uh, they they gave up their their lives uh, because you got to think Peter and, and and James and John they were fishermen, right? They I, I doubt I doubt they were first generation fishermen. Uh, I'm pretty sure their fathers was a fisherman. I'm pretty sure their grandfather yeah. was a fisherman. And Jesus said, "Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men." And the Bible said they just dropped everything. They stopped doing what they knew best. They gave up their, their, their life. They said, all right, we'll stop. We will follow you. And then you got to think of the other disciples. I, I, I can't remember all the occupations. I can only remember some of them. But Matthew was a, was a, a, a tax collector. Uh, from what I read about tax collectors, uh, they were two things. Uh, unwanted and very wealthy. <laughs> Sounds like today. Now I'm joking, but yeah. uh, but they, he had something, right? But I think that he probably. I mean, you don't read this in the Bible, but I feel like Matthew thought that there was. Or Matthew had an empty void in his heart, and I believe that when he met Jesus, he realized he could fill it. And I believe that's you know that's just how I uh, take Matthew's life. Uh, and he got saved and he left it all. I mean, he was a tax collector. Now he's Jesus' disciple. And we know that they're not really that rich. Okay? Then you got Luke, who is a doctor. Left it all. Yeah. And so here it is. They left their life to follow this man who says he is the Messiah. And reading the Old Testament, reading on what the Messiah is, you know, the one that is going to make his kingdom here on earth. And, and, going, and, 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 and here it is that they're under the rule of the Roman Empire. And the Romans and the Jews didn't quite believe the same. And, and of course, uh, the Jews can't say, hey, you're wrong. You know, we don't want you here because the Romans said, no, we're right, kill you, and you're dead. And so they, they, they are under the rule of the Romans, and the Romans have the, the, well, whatever we say goes. And they didn't like that, but here it is, is here it is, this man named Jesus. Hey, I am the Messiah. And they're probably all thinking, great, this guy is going to overthrow the Roman Empire and we're going to be part of it. You know, we're, we're going to be, you know, uh, 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 as, as David had his mighty men, we're going to be Jesus' mighty men. You know, the, the, the terrible 12 or whatever you want to call them. <laughs> you know, here it is. We're going to be part of that. And here it is now. They're watching the one that is called the Messiah being brutally beaten, being nailed to the cross, watching the men, and I believe women too, mock Jesus, spit on Jesus, pull Jesus' beard out, you know, slap him. And they're watching him do this. And if, and if I was one of the disciples, I'd be like, Jesus, if, if you're going to do it, now's the time. It's got to be now. If, if you don't, you're going to die. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to do something, do it now. But Jesus said, do nothing. He did because that was God's plan. And here it is that now they're watching Jesus die. And we read that uh, back in Matthew where, uh, Matthew 27 where, again, it said, Jesus cried again with a loud voice and he gave up the ghost. They watched him die. You know, again, 
it's a miracle, so I'm not taking I'm not taking away that, but it's it, it's something else to watch somebody else raise somebody from the dead. You know, I mean, you can look in the Old Testament where people have raised somebody from the dead. Now we know that that was God, but it wasn't it wasn't. You know, I mean, it wasn't a common thing, but it wasn't like, whoa, this is the first time we've ever seen Jesus raised. I mean, it was, they've heard it before, they read it before, but never have they ever read or seen, and nor will anybody ever see, anybody rise from the grave from their own power. Yeah. Amen. Nobody. And right. so in their mind, they're watching Jesus die, and they're saying, well, great, who's going to raise him from the dead? You know, nobody here can do that. I've never done it. You ever done it, Peter? I have it. Who's going to save him? And they're watching him die, and now he's dead. And hope's just whew, out the window now. Well, Greedy, really, we, we, we trusted this man. Yeah, we've seen the miracles. Yeah, we, we've, we've sat with him for three years. But all that's for nothing now. He's dead. What good is that doing me right now? Now, because I claim to be a follower of Jesus, now I have a, a bounty on my head now. Everyone's wanting to kill me now. And you can read uh, further on, you can read that they were hiding. Yeah. They were scared because they just killed Jesus, and who's going to be next? The Terror of Twelves. Yeah. That's what I'm going to call them from now on. All right, got to kill them. And they were scared. And we see that uh, 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 Nicodemus, and I can't remember the guy's name, the tomb. Joseph. Joseph, thank you. Joseph, they, they asked Caesar, and we didn't read that, but if, if you, you can go back to prior verses, where they begged, uh, they begged uh, uh, Pot, um, Pilate, excuse me, they begged Pilate, saying, hey, Jesus is dead, can't. Can we have his body? I have a tomb. You know, Joseph, it was Joseph's tomb. Uh, that was supposed to be his tomb. And Joseph said, I want to put him in, in, into my tomb. And Pilate said, fine, go ahead. I, I, I feel like at this point, Pilate realized uh, he made a mistake. But again, it was all part of God's plan. And Pilate said, yes, go ahead, take it down. Because normally when somebody gets crucified, uh, they, don't have a, a, they don't have a special place they go to. They either burn the body or just let the animals take care of them. Hmm. You know, and, and Pilate said, fine, you can take Jesus and you can put him. You can put him in, in your tomb. And we see here that this tomb uh, was designed to have a big stone rolled in front of it. And looking a little bit about tombs and, and their stones and stuff, it's kind of like, you know, we have we have doors that slide back and forth. Well, this one, I, from, from what I read, not, you know, just, just read in general the tombs, is that the, the part where the stone goes in, it's a little bit higher than the ground. So it's almost like they multiple have to push it up over it. And once it's sealed, it's not an easy task just to roll it. Uh, it, it, it would take it would take quite a, a few men to roll the stone back, and that was for multiple reasons: for security, you know, grave robbers existed back then, uh, and you know, just 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 because. And here it is that this stone was rolled there, and we see that the women. We read that the women went and they had spices. They had. Uh, spices that they were going to put and that's, that's one of the things that they would do is, is over the dead they would put them on there and and, and we see that these men, women went and I, I believe what we read in Mark they asked themselves how are we going to get in now the stones roll we can't do it yeah how are we gonna, how are we supposed to do this and not only that but we know that there's guards there they're definitely not going to let us go by, open the stone for us so we can do the spices and then leave. They're not going to do that. And, and, and again, their heart, 
I mean, they already had hopelessness, but now it's even more. Because they, they, want, they, they had this last thing, but they can't do it. And we see that, that uh, God, again, all part of God's plan, God knew that they were going to come that evening, that night, as it says, or morning, actually. Morning. God knew. And we see that God's power was revealed. Because, again, that stone was quite heavy, and, and nothing against women at all, but just take them from what they said, okay? They weren't moving that stone, okay? God said, don't worry about it, I'll move it for you. And he did. And then it's again, those guards. What? God says, don't worry, I'll take care of it. And we see that those guards, I mean, these weren't, these weren't just, uh, I, I don't believe that these were new recruits. Uh, I think these were veteran, old, you know, I, I want to, uh, I guess nowadays we call these guys contracts guys. I mean, these were people that, hey, we need you. I want to hire you. This is all you got to do because, it is, you know, uh, uh, rumor has it that Jesus is supposed to come back alive in three days. But we all know that the disciples are going to come and steal the body and then claim that he arose from the grave. So we're hiring you. Stand right here. Don't let anybody in. Now, obviously, nobody's going to come out. Just don't let anybody in. All right. And I can, I can just imagine myself being one of those guys. Like, man, this is so stupid. I have better things to do. But, hey, I'm getting paid. It's all right. I'll just stand here and do nothing for, you know, for a couple hours. Fourth day, whatever. I'm out of here. You know, and all of a sudden, the Bible said that there was an earthquake. And the Bible says that they fell down and were as dead men. I mean, I have fainted in my life one or twice. Okay, and that was, that was not because I was scared. Because I had no breath in me that I literally passed out because it was my own doing. But these men were literally scared half to death. They, they put that saying, I believe that's the reason why that saying is, is there. They were scared. So bad that the Bible says that they were as dead men. And they were out. And the Bible doesn't say when they got back up. I don't know if, if on the way that that Mary and, and Mary and Joanna and all the other women that went, I don't know if it was that time where they went in and and stone rolled away. Hey, he's on the ground. Yeah, there's another one on the ground. Oh, this is weird. <laughs> What's going on? And they see this, again, they, they saw that uh, uh, they, uh, two men in white raiment. And they look at her, look at them, and uh, as Luke, as, as uh, the, the, the account of Luke, he said, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Amen. What, what good is this? Hey, he is risen. He's not dead. He, he said, don't you remember? He said that he will, that the son of man might die by sinful men. But on the third day, arise again. He's arise. He's gone. He's out of here. He, he, he said, come on in. Look for yourself. And they went in and, and actually the, uh, the Bible, uh, uh, he said, when you check it out, and then when you go, go tell his disciples. And Tom and kind of stole a little bit this morning. <laughs> but the angel said, specifically, he said, go tell his disciples and Peter. Yeah. And Peter. Because we know that Peter denied Jesus three times. And Peter saw that. And and. and, and and again, I believe that they locked eyes and Peter, oh man, he just heartbroken and he ran off and, and as the Bible says, cried bitter tears. And the angel said, and I believe the Lord told, hey, don't you forget Peter. <laughs> you make sure you, you specifically say Peter. That is your one task, angel. Don't, don't fail me. <laughs> and he says, hey, tell the other disciples and Peter that he is risen. And man, they ran. And, 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 
And the Bible says, I mean, practically so, they were afraid, or they were, they were, uh, 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 what did they say it was? They were afraid, but they were happy at the same time. I mean, this is crazy, but I'm excited because I'm remembering, you know, these women, they're remembering these things. Yeah, I do remember Jesus saying that. And I know, I know, and I cannot criticize these people because I know because I have revelations in my book. I don't know about y'all, but I have revelation in my Bible. And it tells me what happens. God's, God tells me, hey, this is what's going to happen. And I know sometimes I look and I say, man, God is good. I know, I know the end result. I know it's going to happen. I just know. But then life happens. And I, sometimes I forget about that. Yeah. And I say, ah. Oh, what is going on? You know, God, I, I, I thought you were God. And it takes, and, and as Tommy was saying, it takes those little bit of things to remember. Remember those little victories that God did. And it's like, whoa, you know what? You're right, God. I do remember what happens in the end. I do remember that no matter what happens, even from this point on, my life just goes downhill where it just doesn't seem like anything goes right. I know at the end of the day, when, when all said and done, we're all up, I got the victory. I'm Amen. a winner. Amen. And here it is, these women, they're remembering. I do remember. And they ran. And they told them. And the disciples, we read in John where the disciples said, ah, you're, you're, you guys woke up too early. That's your problem. Or maybe you sniffed a little bit too much of those spices. <laughs> I don't know, but you guys are crazy. Typical woman. <laughs> Typical woman, right? But, and the Bible says that Peter and another disciple, they ran. And they ran, and, and, and it says that the other disciple did outrun Peter. I think as Peter got closer to the, to the tomb, he started remembering what happened. I'm running to Jesus' tomb. Jesus might be there. I denied him three times. I'm a, I want to see it, but I'm, I'm still kind of scared to see it. Yeah. So, I, I imagine he probably, I mean, he was probably, you know, the fastest man today on record is Usain Bolt. I imagine that these guys were running faster than Usain Bolt. But I imagine that when Peter was getting closer, he started slowing down. Saying, ah, oh, I don't want to get there too fast. I'll let the other disciple get up there before I do. And the Bible says that, he did, that the other disciple did get there. The Bible says that he looked, and it was empty. And I imagine Peter, as Peter's coming up to it, he goes, is it empty? He goes, yeah, it's empty. Peter walks in. It's empty. And he looks and he sees that the napkin is placed by itself and the, and the clothes was, was folded and placed by itself. And again, they, I, I, I imagine that, you know, confusion. Because again, it's not every day somebody raises themselves from the grave. Right. And, and I imagine that, that the disciples... <clears throat> That mixed emotions was going on so much at this event. Again, they just watched their best friend die. Three days ago, they watched their best friend die. Now they're in hiding and fear of their lives. And then the women say, oh, he is risen. They go when he's gone. You know, it could have been, for all they thought, this could have been a trap. You know, Jesus, it wasn't like Jesus told the disciples just his disciples, hey, I'm going to rise again in three days. He told everybody. Because the Pharisees and, and, and the rulers, they knew about it. That's why they sent the guards there. So I imagine that the disciples could have even thought, hey, this is a trap. They're trying to draw us out. They know that, that Jesus said on the third day he'll rise again. And here it is, the third day, and his body's gone. And they go, and I imagine that they're scared. And they're saying that the body's empty. 
And again, the angel said, he's not here. He is risen. And we see, and you can read on in all four chapters, read on where the disciples are scared. They're hiding in the room. And Jesus appears on the throne. Now, all disciples was there except one, uh, Thomas. Thomas. And just a side note, this has nothing to do with it. It's just something I just thought of. Thomas, one act can brand you for life. Yeah. One act. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thomas, I'm sure he did great things. As a matter of fact, he could read things in the Bible that he did. But one act, what do we know him as? Doubting Doubt Thomas. Thomas. One act. So that tells me, be careful. Amen. Because one act could brand you for life. That's good. But anyway, that's a little, little, little something. Um, but here it is. They're scared and they're in the room and Jesus appears. He says, hey guys. You know, if it was me, I would have fun with that one. <laughs> I'm like, hey, it's me. <laughs> you know, and, and, and here it is. Now they're excited. Well, first they were scared. Now they're excited. Wow, this is Jesus. And then they go and, and tell Timothy, Timothy. No, Thomas. Thomas. Thomas says, you guys are crazy, just like the women. Y'all are crazy. They said, oh, you got to be in this room too. Mm -hmm. Thomas was there and Jesus says, hey guys. And Thomas looks and he says, Thomas, before you, now, before you told them that you wouldn't believe unless you put your hands in my, or your, your fingers in my hand and my side. Well, here's my hand and here's my side. You can pick one. Pick one first. And here it is that Thomas said, you are. I, I don't need to do it. You are. I believe it now. I, I, I was there. I've seen you crucified. I see those marks in your hands and in your side. And, and another, another side note. Another side note. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. Jesus did die. He, yeah. he didn't, as some people say, he didn't faint. Uh... The disciples did not steal the body. Jesus died. Because think about it, okay? I mean, if Jesus did not die, that would be a pretty great miracle. Uh, for outside of salvation, well, that'd be horrible if he didn't die. But outside of that, that'd be one pretty good miracle because he was beaten and survived that. Uh, he was... Uh, uh, not well beaten, beaten uh, with hands, but then he was beaten with the cat of nine tails, survived that. Then he was nailed on the cross, survived that. Then he got stabbed on the side, survived that. Then he was placed in a tomb, a very cold tomb, that uh, nobody could come in, and obviously you weren't coming out. Uh, Talk about infections, okay? He would have died from infections. Or suffocation. If, if suffocation, if not, if anything, blood loss. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> and, and it wasn't just a couple hours that he was just, that this happened. He was there for three days, okay? Now, I guarantee you that the clothes that they wrapped Jesus in were, was not a fur coat. <laughs> hmm. He didn't have fur mittens and, and, and good insulated boots and a beanie with earmuffs. It was cold. And I imagine that, that would have had some kind of effect on him. Yeah. So these people that say, oh, Jesus just simply fainted. Well, explain all the other ones and you're yeah. still wrong. But no, he died. Amen. And these men watched him die. Because, and, and if if they, if they, if, if the disciples saw him die, stole the body of Jesus, and said, we're going to play the greatest joke on, on mankind, 
I don't know about you, but I'm not willing to die for a joke. Yeah. At the end of the day, hey, his, his body's over there behind the rock. Go get him. You ain't you ain't tying me to two horses and pulling me apart. You ain't gonna throw me into the lion's coliseum. I don't think you're not gonna crucify me upside down. I don't think so. You're not gonna chop off my head. His body's over there. You would have think one of them would have snapped. Yeah, yeah. But not a single one did. They said he is alive. He died. He was alive, and he's coming back. I believe it, and I'm willing to die for it because I've seen it. Amen. Amen. And man, these these women and these and these disciples. And I believe even the ones that were there that was watching Jesus on the cross, hope was gone. But now, they went to the tomb and they see the tomb is empty. And let me tell you this before I keep going on. If Jesus was to just die and that was it, you know, me and you would have no hope. Amen. At all. Amen. If Jesus just died and said, he could have, I mean, he could have said within himself, you know what, I'm going to die, and I'm God, so I'm just going to shoot up straight to heaven, and I'm out of here. You guys, I gave you guys so many opportunities to turn to me. I did so many miracles, said so many things that would prove myself to be God, and yet you guys still killed me, or still, in their mind, killed me. You know what, I'm done with you guys. But Jesus didn't just die. We see it, and again, I, I, I love the angel's response. Why seek ye the living among the dead? Amen. Jesus is alive. And man, the hope that, the, that, that they had, that now, again, they were hopeless. Now they have hope. And man, we have that same hope. That same hope. Jesus, he died. And, and when I read it, you know, it, 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 and, and, and it's hard for me to read sometimes because I don't think of him as dying. I know he came to die for the world. But more personally, he came to die for me. And I look and see what he'd done. And he did all that for me. You know, if... if, if Adam and Eve never sinned in the garden and all the way up to me. And I was the only person on planet earth to sin. He would have done all this over again just for me. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I read that and again, it's, sometimes it is hard for me to read. Because why would somebody do that for me? I, you know, the Bible says that God knows me better than I know me. And I know me. And that's kind of hard because if I could take me out and make another me, I wouldn't even die for me. I'm like, no, you're on your own, buddy. Yeah. But Jesus said, I am going to die for you. And he did, and we see what he did, and, and again, he, he died. And again, reading that, it's like, man, God Almighty, the one that you read <coughs> back in Genesis, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Created the moon and the stars, every living thing came to earth to die for me. But it doesn't just stop there. Because he didn't just die for me. He rose again from the grave for me. And man, I where I thought that there was no hope in my life. You know, before I was saved, I had no hope. And Reading what Jesus did and believing what Jesus did, now I have hope. Now I'm looking for what we call the blessed hope, where Jesus will, Jesus is going to come again. That's right. Amen. I can sit here and say, you know, Jesus isn't going to come again. You can sit there and say, you know what, Jesus isn't coming again. But that doesn't matter because Jesus is going to come again, whether mm -hmm. we like it or not, whether we accept it or not. I don't know when. I can take a pretty good guess. It's probably going to be in my lifetime. But it could be another 2,000 years from now. But matter of fact is, Jesus is coming again. And what I love, what I love, is when you read that, I believe it was in Matthew, the latter part where Jesus ascends, 
Another angel's there. He's saying, hey, that same Jesus that you're watching, he's going to come back. And I love that because it's not just, it's not just uh, some manufactured, you know, God doesn't just have extra Jesuses around. Say, hey, you're going to be the crucified one. You're going to be the one that's born of a, of a virgin. And you're going to be the one that comes back. No, it's the same Jesus. And Jesus, and, and, and it's the same one. So I have that hope that what I just read, what, what we read, that Jesus died, Jesus was buried, and Jesus rose again. It's that very same Jesus. The one that happened thousands of years ago is that same Jesus. And man, I mean, in life, I know, I know, I like Tommy said this morning, I, this year has been one crazy year. Um, you know, I just, you know, <laughs> I saw this, I, I saw this, this uh, meme about 2020, and it was like 2020's the hardest year that's ever, and it had 2021, so oh yeah, just wait. <laughs> you know, I don't want 20, I don't want a repeat of this year. No. You know, this year has been one crazy year. But no matter how crazy it gets, that same Jesus is alive. That same Jesus is still in charge. That same Jesus, if you trust him as your personal savior, is still your God. And he cares for you. And he's there for you. You know, what I love is when Jesus Descended up to heaven. He didn't say, all right, guys, you're on your own now. You guys see me? You guys believe in me? Go and tell everybody you're on your own, though. Sorry. You know, he said, even when I'm gone, I'm still going to send the Holy Spirit. And so now we have it. <laughs> I can, speak, I can only speak for myself. I know everyone here has that testimony, but I can only speak for myself. But I know when I do something wrong, Holy, it feels like Holy Spirit just, what are you doing? Don't you know? I mean, you clearly know that wrong. You know, and, and, and man, I just, that hope. You know, and, and, and again, if you are saved, Man, praise God, you have that hope. That it's not just, that it's not just, I, you know, looking at the other religions. You know, you're looking at Buddhists. Buddhist, Buddha was a real person. I think we all can sit here and agree with that. Buddha was a real person. He wasn't just some fairy tale. He was a real person. But he died. But you can still go to the grave and still find his bones there. Yeah. Allah. The uh, excuse me, Muhammad. Muhammad was a real person, but you can go to where he was laid. You will still find his bones. You know, uh, uh, I know. I mean, you can even go way back to the Old Testament where the uh, pharaohs thought that they were God. But you can go and, well, you can go to the museums now and see their bodies. You know, but you go to any tomb. It doesn't matter. You can go anywhere. You're not going to find Jesus' body. Amen. You're not going to because he's up in heaven. And we have that hope. And, I mean, just the, the greatest thing that we have. You know, that, that's hope. You know, because we can look, we can sit here and say, yeah, you know what? Uh, I do believe that uh, that uh, God, you know, I believe that God did, uh, well, excuse me, I, I do believe that God was born of a virgin. I do believe that God did die on the cross, but I just, it's just still hard for me to, to believe, excuse me, to believe that, uh, that he uh, rose from the grave. And let me, let me tell you this, if you have that mindset, if you have that doubt, 
Uh, let me encourage you. And if you have your Bible, I closed my Bible for some reason. I don't know why. But we're going to end. We're going to end with this. Uh, uh, if you have your Bible, uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Or if you have a doubt that maybe Jesus was not born of a virgin or that he did not die. If you have any doubt about anything of that manner, this is a great verse to go to. Oh. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15. Let's look at verse 12. The Bible says, Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ not be risen, then are preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yet, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up the Christ, whom he raised not up. If so be that, excuse me, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then it is, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. But in, in this life, only we have hope in Christ. We are all men most miserable. And we're going to stop there. I, Paul said, listen, if, God, if, if Jesus did not raise from the dead, then we are false witnesses of God because we're saying God rose from the dead. We're false witnesses and our faith's in vain, our preaching's in vain. We are still in our sins. And then, not only that, now our life is just going to be miserable. And then he carries on, but now is Christ risen from the dead. Paul knew. Paul knew. Christ is risen from the dead. We have that hope. Yeah. And God is coming back. And I just, you know, I just, I know, again, I know that there are things that will discourage us. There are things that will get us off track. But I just pray that no matter what happens, that we can remember that, yes, Jesus was born, Jesus died, and Jesus rose from the grave. And Jesus is coming back for those who trust him as their personal Savior. Now, for those who haven't trusted him as his personal Savior, um, put it as easy as I can, uh, there's no hope for you. Um, if, if the Lord comes... You know, I know in the movies, uh, which I like the movies, but the, they, they, don't, they don't go scripturally, is when the Lord comes, that's it. You don't get a second chance. Amen. Amen. There is no hope. And the only hope is, is, is Jesus. And the only way that we can have that hope is trusting Jesus as your personal Savior. And then once you do that, man, there's no, no greater feeling than having hope. And so, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and stand and we'll pray and be this. All right. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this time again that we come into your house and again to sing praises unto you and uh, just uh, read another portion of your word, Lord. And I do thank you for what you've done, Lord, that you... Uh, was dying on the cross and even though we did nothing to deserve it and nothing that we will do can ever deserve it Lord but you still uh, loved us and still uh, had compassion on us Lord that you went to the cross and endured all those pains and uh, you died for us Lord that uh, not only that but you uh, rose from the grave just as you promised and Lord I do I do thank you for that Lord and again I just Hope that 
no matter what happens in our lives, that we can remember that and still trust you with all our hearts and know that you're still on the throne and uh, you still care for your children. And Again, I just pray for uh, the remaining of the evening and throughout the week. May we honor and glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.